Hey everyone, today I'm back in Philadelphia, one of my favorite places to explore for ironwork. And behind me is one of my all-time favorite pieces of ironwork here, a huge gate by Master Blacksmith Samuel Yellen. Fortunately, it's partially covered by some scaffolding, but we'll check it out as best as we can. Thanks for joining me for this tour of Philadelphia Ironwork. So you can see these window washers are busy on some scaffolding there. And they, here is a massive gate panel by Samuel Yellen. Okay, so look at that. Probably four inch diameter, maybe inch and a half diameter pin with the chisel detail on top. See the riveting connections, little embossing detail where the hinges are riveted onto the gate. A rat tail style pinnel on the gate as well, which is kind of unusual on something that size. And then check out this detail here. Beautiful rosettes, hot chiseled in the center. All this work here, forge welded quatrefoils. And look at the chisel work. And then check this out. It just goes up forever. hot collars, hot punch pass-throughs here. Just full of exquisite detail. You can see the gates are actually bifold on both sides. So look at the spiral detail on that one. Almost a circle of life on that one. Cross circle almost a face there two eyes and a nose a mouth more chisel work here that's the bane of ironwork in a city setting so much bird droppings covering it all or just work are covered by the scaffold but those are also by yellow. Check out the flower-like animal head details on the top. And that bracket is absolutely massive. And look at these details like this cross hatch and this one's almost like a flower. That's a common one that he did. This is square with the rosette in the center. So much detail, each one unique. Really beautiful work. I'll have to come back when these aren't covered by scaffold, but this is one of my favorite pieces of all time. This type of work is extremely underrated, but these beautiful bronze railings, obviously with some bird deterrent on them. This is all architectural brass or bronze, again on City Hall, Philadelphia. But even the ornament of the, the bird uh, deterrent is beautiful. Beautiful cast brackets, post, Almost like an olive branch detail. Check out the old subway entrance with all this cast iron work. Even the, uh, the plate in there. Small details. So much has changed in design aesthetic over the recent years, but love classical architecture. 
public art in the cityscape. These are recent bronze railings. These are all Julius Bloom parts I recognize from their catalog. But you can't go wrong with bronze. So contrast the last subway opening with this one. Modern stainless steel railings, which are nice. Clear glass. Different time period, different aesthetic. Sixteen thirty-three Locust Street, and these are Forge Grills, also by Samuel Yellen. Um, these pronounced rivets, pass-throughs, forge welds, beautiful fantail scrolls, and there's several of them. This one is more simplistic in the middle, and then a repeat of that on the corner. But this is also Samuel Yellen work. Locust Street, Philadelphia. Beautiful cast brass or bronze grills in this building. Metal fenestration in windows has become a huge market here in the US and all over the world. Not much of it incorporating classical details like this though. Just beautiful. This is also all Samuel Allen work, as well as that up there. There's an endowment for the doors. Oh, really? Yeah. It's this family. It's beautiful work. All cast iron work, but gorgeous nonetheless. We're in Rittenhouse Square now, which has a lot of fantastic architecture and details. Sixteen twenty nine Locust Street, and there's some beautiful forge work here, done in a French style. This is all forged and repose work, done similar to the other video that we showed. How tight and crisp the forgings are. This laminated collar, it's hard to see, but there's a seam there where this was built up around that. It's always nice to see these details. The beautiful work on the lockbox, as well as this molding on the edge. 1629 Locust Street. Work continues from this door up to these beautiful forged balconies. This is all forged work. We are at the Curtis Institute of Music. Beautiful ironwork here. Look at that lion with all that floral detail cascading down. This is 1720 Locust Street. These are not the reason I'm here. There's some Samuel Yellen gates around the, the corner. More ironwork all on the second floor. Okay, and here is the main piece I was searching for at the Curtis Institute of Music. These beautiful gates at one of the entrances. These are all forged by Samuel Yellen. 
They're in stark contrast to the gates at the Packer building and how delicate they are. These beautiful flower bulb details, forge welded leaves, collars, all hot color. Truly a hidden architectural gem here in Philadelphia, located at the Curtis Institute of Music. Just fantastic. I believe these are more contemporary. I forget who did these, but beautifully forged as well. Super delicate. I think this might have been by Harvey Yellen or Samu Yellen metal workers, but recent. Gorgeous work here. Check out these beautiful gates one of the side entrances to Curtis Institute of Music. Lovely flower, look how delicate the scroll work is. With the collars, these have been recently repainted. Wow. Beautiful detail on the wings, the lockbox. And behind them are an entirely different set of gates. I'm presuming, again, yellow and very similar to the front gates. can't access those because this gate is locked. I wonder who did the restoration work on this because they look quite nice. Lovely forged birds, hot pass-throughs, flowers, just exquisite forged work. How fun is this bird dangling from the latch bar? so ostentatious just posed out there in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful modern brass doorway. Some lovely handle details. This is so underappreciated in and of itself. Some brass or bronze lighting at the entrance of the Barclay. Some more lovely brass work. Not sure who did these, but this is 1804 Rittenhouse Square. I love the connection of the ironwork to the top of these stone columns. So nicely executed. And then the detail of these chicken feet holding up the posts. How fun is that? So simplistic in design, but so successful just because of the way the connections were done. Comment below if you know who did these. I have no idea. Here's a prime example of why it's so important to have green spaces in city design because it's a beautiful spring day and this park is just absolutely packed full of people just sitting, relaxing, walking right here in the center of Philadelphia.
these are some absolutely massive awning brackets, but this is what a blacksmith looks at. See that hammer detail in the center of that scroll? Now that's probably three quarter inch by three inch stock. So pretty massive, but look at all the beautiful hammer marks left on that work. This is 2010 Spruce Street. And this is a pair of grills that I restored 17 years ago. And it is so nice to see them looking beautiful other than some dust from the city on them. They still look fantastic. Now, before I restored them, you need to understand about 40% of this was missing. So, I had to replicate and reproduce a lot of missing elements and I honestly couldn't tell you what I made and what is original because we did a great job. Not bragging, we just take this type of work very passionately to make sure that beautiful works like this live on. When we did the restoration and conservancy work on these, they were sandblasted down lightly to bare metal. And at that point, I could find no markings on them of who originally made them. So no one stamped them, but they are super delicate. Like a lot of this wrap work is all quarter inch, eighth inch, and that, that's the original size that was on there but it's always nice to see work that you did looking well and in good use. I'm from those grills that I restored. Here we are at 2006 Spruce Street. Again, super delicate work. This is all like eighth inch by three quarter stock these lovely forged details. Look at the cascade of sizes of these rounds coming down between these two tapered scrolls. Just exquisite detailing. Now Rittenhouse Square is the centerpiece of Philadelphia and I could honestly film for several days in this section of town and not even cover all of the beautiful historic work that's here. But I've tried to show several beautiful pieces. Now these weren't open earlier, but they are now. And look how beautifully these gates fold back into this opening. Obviously purposefully designed to reveal these doors. This has to be yelling as well. It's that beautiful detailing. Look at the uh, detail of each bolt head on there and the chisel work around them. Each one unique and different. These door pulls and plates are nice as well. A little detailing on those. What really stands out are these pool handles on the gates. So nicely chiseled and embossed. Little lion head detail. Look at the build out from the door itself. That roping detail around. Again, no two bolt heads alike. Each one unique in their own right. And on this other gate, There's the lioness. So we have the female lion on this side. And the male lion on this side with his mane. These railings are really well executed, all riveted together, collars. Forged hot twist. Little 
his work on the feet. Nice forging here. This is new, these have been added. This is stainless here. stop by and someone opened them up I'm glad they did got to check out a little bit of detailing on those doors and see how beautifully designed these were to fold back and not just be gates but actually become part of the visual transition into the space very beautifully designed well it wouldn't be a tour without a little bit of Albert Paley this is Synergy by Paley. This is formed and fabricated steel with a painted bronze patina. The history of this piece is that it was actually installed elsewhere. It was originally a gateway that you drove through a while back. I forget the exact location, but I actually drove through it a long time ago. And um, the building that it served a gateway to was torn down and then the piece was removed and it's been reinstalled here at the entrance to this building but it features a lot of his signature ribbon-like elements again very celebratory in nature it's not unlike the piece he did down in texas at the worthingham center for the arts very cool piece Got to stop and check out little sleeper grills like this. How nice is this wrap detail here coming down, riveted? This little fan like detail. These are obviously more modern. I don't know who did these. Again, comment below if you happen to know who did these. But we're still on Spur Street at Temple. Beth Zion, Beth Israel. This work is often so underappreciated by blacksmiths because it's not forged, but there is nothing like the beauty of a repetitive section of cast iron fencing. Look how gorgeous that is. It has its place and it's always fascinating to go back and see historically these different methods of construction. This obviously being like a modular design of this fence. More lovely cast iron fencing at the 10th Presbyterian Church. I love the power of that 
repetitive design and detail. Another thing as a blacksmith and someone who restores ironwork that I'm always looking at is what's not there, what's missing. This has obviously been cracked off. Was that a lovely pineapple finial? They've been broken off of every one all down the street. And something was definitely cracked off. That's not the termination of this post. Although these are beautiful in their own right. Baltimore also has a rich history of cast iron work. Someday I will have to do a video down there as well. It's a little forged scraper. You can see the rivet there. Kind of a massive scroll. On the other side of the street from this building that I filmed earlier, but I'm really struck by it. Such a lovely little house. And it is for sale. Beautiful work on it. I'm at 1622 Locust Street. I've never seen these grills before, but what catches my eye is this delicate little detailing here. Repose leaves. Almost looks to be similar time period to the grills that I restored on Spruce Street. And a lot of similar sizes and stock proportion and detailing I don't know who did these but they look to be about the same time period those other grills i restored on spruce street were from about 1925 but they weren't yelling i don't know who made them but and i don't know who made these so from the ground up, it is amazing to look at that statue of William Penn. Again, the conservancy of that piece done by my friend David Kahn and his partner Constance from Moreland Studios. And oh my gosh, mad respect for you guys. That is flipping high. And I don't think you could catch me up on a piece of scaffolding surrounding that. Awesome work guys, so much respect for preserving that beautiful piece of Philadelphia history. It takes so many talented people to protect and preserve the arts. And they are definitely gems in that community if you know David or Constance. Tremendous people. Clothespin by Klaus Odenberg, 1976. Monumental public art sculpture in the center of Philly. I gotta say I love the transition of the base down into the subway system. It's one thing to make a work of art, another thing to stage it properly. This piece is beautifully done. Close up of the gates at City Hall are relatively modern. There's a story behind these that it took quite a bit of time to get these built and placed. Civil War bronze dedicated to Gettysburg. And this is immediately a controversial piece in today's political conversation and you know what we cannot erase or change any of our history and I just wonder if ripping down any of this be it confederate or northern are we losing some of the dialogue of what happened and why even if it's horrendous and horrific What needs to remain and what needs to go? That is the million dollar question. Outside the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, the giant paintbrush and blob of paint. It's not the official title, but. Das Holdenberg is the paint torch.
Arrow Memorial from World War One. This piece is gilded, although the gilding does show some signs of aging. Architectural metalwork, perhaps at its finest, at the Cathedral Basilica, St. Peter and Paul. Okay, so this is a somewhat long video, but if you're still hanging in there, thank you, because there's more coming that is worth hanging around for. Beautiful gates by artist Christopher Ray. These are all forged and fabricated steel. He was a prolific artist in the 70s and 80s and inspired many other contemporary blacksmiths to check out some of this detailing. He was well known for a series of sculptural works that he did called Manisex, which were half insects and half human forms. And he was a true artist in the sense that he was offered a lot of money to continue that series of work and turned it down because he didn't want to over commercialize it. But these are beautiful forged and fabricated gates by artist Christopher Ray. This is also by Christopher Ray, just an incredible work of art. He incorporated so many crazy figures into his work very forged and organic very imaginative use of form organic flowing into human-like elements these beautiful rock-like elements check out this little lizard just amazing see the beautiful hammered work he did a lot of his work by hand at the Coal Forge and is, in my opinion, one of the most underappreciated metal artists of our time. But his work did inspire a lot of other contemporary blacksmiths, guys like Greg Levitt that are a little bit before me and I look up to and then now I have people reaching out to me saying, hey, I really appreciate your work and respect it. And that's what's amazing about blacksmithing. The craft just keeps pushing itself forward. One artist breaking a barrier, inspiring another. Fantastic work by Christopher Ray. Not afraid to let the weld show and become part of that organic texture. Took this bar stock, deeply hammered the one edge to allow the material to speak. Left the other edge alone. Scroll like elements, creating water and wind. And again, imaginative use of texture and the welder on these leaves. Talk about imaginative use of texture and form. These flat pieces textured and built up here as standoffs with all of the weld showing. So gorgeous, so beautiful. This piece just textured by hammer, left smooth here with detailing there. This twisted like element, kind of cascading down large to small.
even this piece just the welded up the most scrap like looking piece to create some texture frog legs just awesome wicked cool gates well that's gonna wrap up this video thank you again for joining me i hope you enjoyed this tour and the beautiful work as much as i did um, if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. Catch you on the next one. Thanks.